What's up, my Mile High Mamas? This is Boo from Mile High Distilling. We're down here at Balmer Peak Distillery. It's a little place right on Alameda, about Alameda and Union. If you're a local, please come in, check this place out. Even if you're in Grand Junction, Colorado, if you're in Minnesota, Texas, come down here, check this place out. It is absolutely amazing. They are craft artisans in every essence of the word I know amazing cocktails, amazing spirits. And today we're here for a very important reason. They've graciously allowed us, they've shared their space with us, they've registered a still for us. We are legally able to distill for you guys and show the whole process. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of videos. We're gonna be doing videos on stripping versus spirit runs, different recipes, I mean the whole nine yards. So we're gonna have a lot of content to produce here. And um, thank you again to Bomber Peak for sharing their space with us. Please come check it out. For today, we're gonna be working on a baby step bourbon recipe kit. We're gonna be going start to finish on the recipe kit that we uh, fermented about two months ago. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, and we are distilling. We've been heating up about 20, 30 minutes at this point. We have an ice chest with a pump for our cooling source here. And we're just, we're just doing our thing. Um, we're already starting to distill. So we are doing our baby step bourbon recipe kit that we have online on our site today. And baby step bourbon's a somewhat of an old recipe. It's been around for a little bit. It usually just incorporates corn. You've got a distiller's malt for enzyme diastatic power. And then you have a rye for a little bit of mouthfeel flavor. We added a little bit of oak smoked wheat into our recipe kit, try to change things up a bit. We're gonna see if that oak smoke actually comes through in our initial run. Most bourbons get their flavor from the barrel and uh, you know you have to age to get that. We're gonna see if we can get that initially up front. And then as we're distilling and having a good time, we're gonna take our jars and we're gonna do an oak spiral test and we're gonna see by the end of this run if we already start to get some oak color. So for now, we're just gonna let our four shots do our thing. We have 12 ounce mason jars right here. And you can see I gotta switch this one out actually um, pretty soon. We're running pretty fast. We're in hot still mode on our Torpedo Pro. So our, our original Torpedo Pro has this section, sight glass, reflux, and then this top piece right here. But we've shortened this column. That's the beauty of the pros, they're modular. And we're just uh, shortening it up to kind of get more flavor out of that. And our condenser's ice cold. I'm actually gonna slow my controller down. They've got their nice heating caddy with all four of their heating elements here. So I'm gonna slow the controller we have down. We're gonna get that flow down just a little bit more solid where we kind of want it. Now one thing we took the liberty of doing before this video started was we separated out the grains from our liquid. So here, um, if you hadn't, haven't watched the fermentation video we did on this Baby Step Bourbon, there's gonna be a link down below in the description, check it out. But you notice during that, when we did that, we lined our bucket with a bag like this and put all our grains before we added our grains and it uh, filled up this bag. And that makes for such easy uh, separation between the, the solids and liquids. Now with that heating element, remember you have to do that. So when you line your bucket like that, all you do is just, when you got your bucket, you've got your bag and you're just gonna tighten it up Strain it out, get all the liquid you can out, and just remove, simple. So I've got our mile high shot glass. The link for this is found in the description as well. And this is a great little testing tool too. Rather than use a spoon or something, if I want a sample of what I've got, I can just put right under. Okay, so definitely got a really nice flavor even for heads. It's, that oak smoke is coming through. It's a little bit chocolatey almost. 
Um, but I can definitely tell them in my head. It's bitter. It's definitely bites a little bit. And I'm going to slow my pump down too because I'm noticing I'm getting a little bit of water. I think this is a little too cool with this ice bath right now. Let me try to slow that down. We've done a lot of videos on this, on cuts and what to expect and everything. Um, but we'll, we'll go through it again. I mean, we're in our heads right now. So this is calculated for most of our four shots. This is about 300 milliliters. Um, in a pot still, probably account for more like 500 milliliters. So we, we undershot it a little bit. I think we're going to be okay, though. Um, you know, again, everything coming through there is heads anyway, so it, it doesn't really matter if I get a little of my four shots in this jar. I'm going to have to pitch this jar anyway. This is all heads. I know it's going to be. So we're just going to let this one fill up as well. And heads are indicated by a nail polish remover smell. You've got acetone, acetaldehyde, different things in there that we're going to be experiencing. And the best way to determine where our heads are is really through that smell and taste. So keep a spoon, keep a shot glass underneath that still. Every once in a while, take a sip. I mean, it's, it's not going to kill you to take very, very trace amounts of methanol. It's not going to make you go blind. You're fine. But if you guys want a better indication, I can tell you right now, I'm at 170 degrees in my still. Um, Again, temperatures are sort of a mix-up, and there, there's so many variables to them that it's really hard to follow this to a T, right? Um, we're at a higher elevation than probably a lot of you guys watching the video, so our temperatures are going to be a little bit higher than what you'll probably see. You might be closer to like 160. Um, but, you know, 170 is looking right to me, and... Um, that's around where our ethanol will be too, our, our hearts, um, probably 175, 180. So right now it's a waiting game. If you guys had the ability to, grab a chair, grab a beer, something like that, and just watch the still. Wait till your glass fills up and switch it out. And um, around the probably Probably the next glass, we're going to start taking a little more in-tune taste test because that's right where we'll start to break and we're going to get into our heads. So another great thing about this unit is this is an eight-gallon boiler with a three-inch Torpedo Pro. So with a two-inch, you distill about around a quart per hour is your usual speed. This will do double that. So we're at two quarts per hour. We're going to be speeding through this run. In fact, after we removed our grains, we ended up with about five gallons of liquid. We're going to be distilling, I would think, no less than like, no more than three hours, three or four hours. It's going to be a fast run, and we're going to get a good return. We're going to get about, I would say, a gallon, maybe three quarters of a gallon closer to. Always remember to keep a Sharpie handy when you're distilling, and we can label while we're distilling. So this first jar here is our four shots, like that. You can spell it out. I'm a little bit lazy, I guess. All right, so that's a full jar. And the reason I'm filling it up, I usually go about halfway, and that leaves room to dilute with water, juices, whatever you want, right? But remember, this is just heads, nothing more, and I know it's nothing more, so I just fill it up. Um, but as we proceed through the run, we're gonna be taking a little more precise cuts and probably be filling those jars about halfway. I also wanna take a little bit of a shout out to Bomber Peak again, and I just love how this looks. I know how it looks on the camera. I like seeing their big still next to our little bitty boy. You know, I think it's a cool little look. And as you can see, I mean, you got a little bit of some aesthetic. We've got lots of barrels here. And it really just, I like distilling in this kind of environment. It feels really good. So let's take another taste test here, guys. It 
So in that initial smell, I'm not smelling acetone. I know it's there, but I'm not smelling it much. I can feel it. You can definitely feel it. But because I can't smell it, I think we're, first off, clean. I think we've got a really clean wash going with a little trace amounts of, of methanol. I think we're, we did pretty good on keeping methanol out as best as we could. And number two, to me, that's an indication that we're, we're processing right. I think we have a good amount of water that's kind of diluting that methanol, so it's a little harder to smell. Um, you know, that's just my thoughts. I'm not, a, not an expert. But I'm liking what we've got going on so far. And that oak smoke is a really nice, um, really nice compliment to this recipe. And with a little more in my shot glass, I filled it up a little more than usual. And, and that methanol can definitely be smelled. So we know it's there. And rather than freak out, go out of control, do all these tests and everything, again, we're just using our nose and our taste. And remember, we are trained. We're inherently like this as cavemen to identify poison, right? So as long as you keep your common sense about you and you hold on to your instincts and your basic smell and touch and, and everything else, um, you really shouldn't have too much of a problem distilling. So I don't know if you guys just saw that but my still just puked a little bit. So I have this flow kind of jumped out. And as long as there's not too much of that, we're all okay. There's nothing wrong. If it starts doing that consistently, that means you're having trouble finding an equilibrium. <clears throat> By equilibrium, I mean the amount of heat going into your still as opposed to the amount of water coming in your still. Something needs to change there, your equilibrium's off. That can be done a number of ways. I always start with my heat controller because I have a really precision device that can manage my heat. And so if I start seeing that puking, I'll just turn down on my controller. What can sometimes happen is there's too much water going into the still. And when that happens, or the water's too cold and coming through the still, and I turn down my heat controller, that only makes it worse. So if you start with your temperature controller and the puking gets worse, try upping your heat controller. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You'd think more power equals more of that coming through, but humor me on this, try it out. Up your heat. And when you up your heat, that equilibrium finds that balance and uh, things go back to normal. All right, we are down with jar number two and on to our third. So we did taste test jar number two right at the end, and that methanol is still present. So pretty fair to say that this is all heads. So I'm glad I marked it heads too. This third jar, I'm not gonna mark with the Sharpie just yet. I'm not sure quite what's in here. I know we're near the end of our heads, just mathematically, I know. So we'll just let it do its thing, and we'll be a little more frequent on the taste test here now. All right, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me going cuckoo, but this has changed a little bit. The, the methanol is still there, but something different is coming out. So we might be hitting a next boiling point of something else. Uh, maybe acetic acid, I think, would be next on the list on boiling points list. Check our cuts video if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And our temperature is still right at 170. It's not moving, so that's a good indication we're still in our heads as well. When that thing starts to creep up a tiny bit, I think will be a good indication we're in our heart.
are back. We did just go ahead and let you guys enjoy nice chill music and let you just enjoy the drip and see what's going on. Um, you might have noticed through that interlude that our flow turned down a little bit. And the reason for that is we are not familiar with this cooling source we've been doing. We're doing an ice chest, an ice bath. And um, obviously, with that cold water, super cold, colder than we're used to, that seemed to cold, cool this condenser down so much that we started getting water into our distillate. And so that really tanked our proof. Our first jar of hearts was around like 50 proof just because so much water was going through there. And so it goes to show. I mean, believe me, you talk on the phone with us, you email us questions you have, we know them. We're, we're smart when it comes to distilling, but having the knowledge in your head and actual distilling is a whole different process and a different practice. So we're not experts in that. And we're learning along with you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching with us and, uh, and being with us. Um, as far as where we're at in the run, we're at our third jar of hearts about to fill up. And the reason we're filling all the way up is to account for that water in the distillate. Um, obviously, we, we leave room usually so that we can dilute with water in the future. But since it's already been diluted, whatever. We'll fill it up and it'll still be good. It's still tasting good still smelling good, lower proof than we're used to, but get, I mean, if you're like what you're making, who cares, right? And that's kind of the thing with the stilling. It doesn't have to be so serious. So everything's still enjoyable, but this water is clouding our spirit a little bit. So I'm going to bring this up. We're going to see there's a little bit of cloudiness and that's just the water. It's not anything harmful or anything like that. It's the water mixing with the oxygen in the air. And that's all we're seeing in the distillate. Still completely safe to drink. If we really wanted to clean it up, we totally could. But, you know, believe it or not, a lot of beers on the market and stuff, the hazy IPAs, it's basically the same as that back set and stuff. I'm not worried about it. But this is the tribulations with distilling. You mess up occasionally, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're at 50 proof. It's pretty low for our run. Can easily achieve 120, 140 when everything goes smoothly. It didn't go smoothly this run, but we're not fretting about it, guys. We're just gonna be distilling. We're still liking what we're making, and that is the most important part. Another thing to keep in mind is, you know, most whiskeys are dialed back to about 80. They, they come out the still around 140, 160, and there's something called barrel strength. Distilleries have a barrel strength whiskey, which is about 120, 140. That's what they age with, and that's important because you're taking a slow process and making it even slower if your proof is down. So they, they proof, they, have a, they, they age at that higher proof to sort of uh, speed up that process a tiny bit, and then they dilute down. I guess we're just getting rid of that process. We're still gonna be able to age. We're just not gonna to have to dilute. So we're in our fourth jar of hearts right now, and I'm noticing a little bit of bitter taste. So that's my first indication we're starting to get into our tails. We're gonna keep on proceeding. During our tails, remember how important cuts are, precision cuts, because things go from nice and you get a lot of characters within the tails. They can go from that to bitter and sour real bad. So I do have some initial bitterness and that's pretty normal for tails. Bitter as opposed to what I was getting before in my hearts. But in terms of overall bitterness, it's still just slightly there. And I think as we proceed through the run in our tails, we're gonna start getting some of those esters that bring in fruity notes, other things that make it a little bit sweeter and it'll start to be noticeable. So. Um, we're going to be taking precision cuts every, every two minutes or so, taste test, see what we got, and just proceed from there until we don't like what we're getting. All right, so we are in tails number one jar, and I just want to show you guys through this run. It's only been about an hour, but you're going to start seeing that it's got a grayish kind of tint to it already. 
in that jar. This is our first jar that we set aside. So it's about an hour. We're already starting to get this. And also, we did finally fix our proof. So again, I told you guys about equilibrium. We finally found that equilibrium. We had to turn our controller way up, but that counteracted the amount of water going in. And so now our jars are coming out crystal clean again. And um, a, little, a little bit too late, but we're still gonna collect what we can. We're still having fun. Can you guys tell? I'm having so much fun. <laughs> we're trying. So I wanna be honest, folks. A little bit of a disappointing run for us. I wanted to kind of showcase how an actual run would go. Everything going smoothly, but we're in a new location. We're doing a heat source we're not used to. Uh, we're doing a water source we're not used to. Um, there was a few things at play here. Um, our run didn't go as well as expected, um, but our yield is okay. And again, our flavor is okay. We're getting a lot, especially in these tails. The grains are coming through so well. It's tasty. It's really tasty stuff. So overall, I'm happy with what we did. Um, we're gonna be finishing up a few, probably one more jar of tails. And then I think we're gonna be at the point where it's gonna get a little bit bitter. From there, we can choose whether we're gonna to continue to collect and save that alcohol for a future run, or we'll just stop it there. So as we start filling up, probably the last jar we'll be collecting, I wanted to take the time to once again, thank Balmer Peak for letting us do this and letting us proceed to do this. I'm so excited to bring you guys more content here, distilling, and I have faith I will improve as a distiller. I have the knowledge in my head, everyone at Mile High does. Distilling is another practice, and I'm gonna get it down, and you guys are gonna be here along for the ride, and you guys are gonna learn with me, and I hope we all become better distillers together. So, once again, if you guys are in Lakewood, Colorado, please check out Barmer Peak. They make phenomenal spirits. They're small, craft, and just true to the craft. So, enjoy them and enjoy the video. And regardless of what we made here and how disappointed I am in myself, I'm so glad we came down here. Any mistake that we had, we learned from and we adapted to. That's part of distilling is adapting. So when our water fucked up, we figured it out and now we don't have water. And that's what's gonna happen in distilling. You're gonna run into issues. It's about fixing them. I think we did a great job there. So I'm pleased overall with the run. I'm gonna call it a win. And I hope you guys learned a thing or two. It's probably nice to have some hands-on experience, and I'm glad we could show that to you. Please look forward to future videos, and we'll be making some phenomenal stuff in the future. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, please be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Thank you all.